Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Today you find me at the Chester East services on the M56, having a look at what's available for you EV drivers. When I first saw this services changing uh, about six months ago, and I stopped off here for a coffee and saw that there was some groundwork going on. So I took some photos of that and uh, made a note of it to come back. Well, recently, I was taken away for the weekend by my wife for my birthday, and we went to Chester for a shopping expedition. I've got a sneaky feeling that the shopping was not really meant for me. But anyhow, it was a fabulous weekend. But on the way back, coming along the M56, I thought, oh, I'll just stop off here and see how it's progressing. Delighted to find that it was finished and open. There were uh, 12 chargers, all connected and working, beautifully lit up. So couldn't film at the time because it was my birthday weekend treat. So just made a note of it and uh, de determined to come back and do a proper video here. Well, four weeks later, here I am back again, and this time with Jonas. And we're on an expedition for filming, and this is the first stop of the day. So here we are, it's the M56, Chester Services East. We're about six or seven miles north of Chester City. We're on the M56, which heads off to the west towards North Wales, uh, to the east towards Liverpool and Manchester, and to the south into the depths of Wales. So when we got here, we were absolutely amazed to find a hive of activity. The 12 chargers that had been beautifully lit up and uh, neat and tidy just a month ago uh, were now mostly in bits. We had an ABB van here with an ABB service engineer. Well, for those of you not familiar, ABB is the manufacturer. It's a Swiss company and they make uh, most of the chargers for the UK. They are by, by far the biggest in the UK. Uh, there are other companies like Siemens, uh, but these are the kings. And GridServe favour them very heavily. Yeah, this is pretty much all they install. So we arrived here to find the ABB van and the service engineer has got the cabinets open. And so we asked for permission to film, but he said, well, don't go up to the cabinets. But if you happen to catch them in the background, that's absolutely fine. So yeah, we happened to catch a lot of these in the background. Also on site, we found the grid serve engineer for the area. Uh, obviously, they're, they're the ones who operate the chargers. ABB are the ones who supply the chargers. And there'll be a third company, which will be the installation company, who actually install them. So we had on site the grid serve engineer and the ABB engineer working very hard to try and get them back up and running. There are 12 chargers here, six of them were down. And when we talked to the engineer, we found that the electrical arrangement is that they are linked together in pairs. So if one charger fails, it's likely to switch off another one. So you get two going down together and the engineer doesn't always know which one has caused the other one to go down. You could have one faulty uh, charger and two go down and he's got to find out which one has caused the fault. And then when he fixes that one, it often brings the other one back online. But here, at least three chargers had gone down because there were six in total that were operational. They were fenced off and the van was there and he was busy testing them. We did hover around with the cameras and we got an awful lot of very good footage. Really impressed with what Jonas got uh, because I was keeping him distracted on one side but Jonas was sneaking around doing the filming on the other. Anyway, suffice to say, um, we learnt a lot about the insides of these cabinets. The ABB engineer wasn't desperately happy. In fact, he didn't want to go on camera so every time we got the camera out, uh, he disappeared. Uh, but the uh, grid serve engineer was more than happy to talk to us on camera. And he even uh, introduced us to the gloves they wear. These are the heavy uh, electrically insulated gloves that they wear because these are very powerful chargers. 350 kilowatts. It's about 10 times the power that goes into your house. So these are massive, massive currents. So they are fully protected. Uh, we didn't manage to grab a pair ourselves, but uh, it's interesting to see the gloves. 
I always love coming to GridServe installations because there's such a variety of cars. With a Tesla, if you go to a Tesla-only site, you only ever see Teslas, and after a little while, you've seen them all. But GridServe, there's always something new. So on this particular occasion, it was really nice to see the variety. So we spotted straight away, there was a Porsche Taycan, there was a couple of um, Hyundai Ioniq 5s, uh, there was a couple of vans, um, there was a BYD Atto 3, and also there were uh, some, uh, very pleased to see, some vans. Uh, we saw the plug-in baby, I love that one, uh, British Gas. Uh, they do seem to go a little bit over the top. Anyway, uh, Octopus fans there as well. And these were all plugged in and charging. And that's lovely to see that more and more vans, your traditional white man van, um, is now ending up, uh, I suppose you call them blue man vans nowadays. Uh, so it's great to see them. Uh, great to see all the other cars in here. It's really nice to see such a variety of cars at a single charger. So chargers here, they are all, uh, 12 of them, they're all CCS2, but two of them, the end ones, uh, they're CCS2 and CHAdeMO. And while talking to the engineers, we did discover that in line with other companies, uh, one of them in particular, EVgo over in America, they have announced that they will no longer be installing CHAdeMO plugs on the chargers. And GridServe have also determined that the days of installing the plugs, the Chatamo plugs on their chargers, is very limited indeed. So make the most of them. They're not going to get rid of them. The ones that are here will, will stay here. And obviously they will service them because it's the charger itself that they're servicing. And whether people are using the CCS2 plug or the Chadamo plug, they do need to service the charger. So you're not going to notice an immediate withdrawal of all the Chadamo sockets. These are going to be around for a while and they're going to be maintained for a while. While we were here, we did come across a Mercedes dealer uh, who was delivering a car and coming up to meet a customer. Now, he was from Exeter, and the dealership down there is Mercedes dealership, but also BYD, and they deliver the cars all over the country. So he'd come up from Exeter, which is a good four or five hours on the motorway, uh, and come up here to meet up with a customer. While he was here, he did uh, stop to talk to us, he saw us filming, came over, very friendly, and uh, we did get to manage to chat with him about his experience with the BYD Atto 3. Well, this is, uh, this is a very nice car, and this is the first time I've actually got up really close to one. Uh, and I asked him immediately what his opinion is. And of course, it does count because he's used to driving Mercedes, both ICE and EVs. And we asked him what his experience driving up here. And he was very complimentary. He said it was a lovely car to drive, very well built, good quality, very comfortable, very well equipped. This from a, a Mercedes driver. So these BYDs, these Chinese cars, they are making inroads into the UK market. Now, in addition to the 12 brand new 350 kilowatt chargers, the GridServe say they have a habit, a policy, of leaving the old chargers there and servicing and making sure they're working. And here, uh, there are two 40 kilowatt shared power, shared bay chargers. And those will be available, and they now call them slow chargers, and they are available for anyone if they have a slower charging uh, maximum speed, or if all of the 350 kilowatts are occupied at the time. So these units, uh, we learned a bit about them when we were talking to the engineers. It's quite fascinating what they do and fascinating once we understand them to see the difference between the, uh, the power supply going into the 350 kilowatt chargers compared to that going into the 40 kilowatt chargers. We have heard that one of the biggest problems is uh, with maintenance of these is actually the protective posts. They have pillars in front of them to stop people reversing into them. 
and they regularly come across pillars that have been reversed into and they've been bent over and on occasions that will bend into the charger itself and damage the charger. But even if it's just the, the pole that's been damaged, that does need to be repaired to stop someone else backing into that again and damaging it further and then driving into the, um, into the charger itself. The hotel here used to be a day's inn. These are budget hotels, a bit like Travel Lodge or Premier Inns, uh, designed for motorists. Uh, but when we got here, we noticed it's been rebranded. It's now a Super 8. So obviously we went inside and we found out what was going on. Well, this is a new venture for them. It's to try and separate them out a little bit from the Travel Lodges and the Premier Inn to make them more popular, because uh, it's a very competitive market. And the main difference here is these have been designed very specifically for the EV drivers because directly in front of the hotel are now six charging bays. And when we look at them, we find out, first of all, they're installed by GridServe. Uh, so they've been put in at the same time as the 350 kilowatt chargers. The chargers here are fast chargers, so either 7 or 11 kilowatts. And the details are not yet available on the website, so we can't tell which is which. However, these will probably be 11 kilowatts. Now, the fascinating thing is, there's not much information on the website, so we went straight into the hotel, found a very helpful receptionist, and um, she was full of information about these. So the deal is really simple, is that there are six bays here, and each bay is available for booking. So when you book your room, you can book the bay as well. I'm told that it's a £10 charge, but the charging is free. So you pay £10. Now, if you're just staying for one day, obviously when you arrive, that bay is allocated to you, it's yours. You can plug in whenever you want, leave it charging overnight while you're sleeping, uh, it's yours. So far, which is yours. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, you're on the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> just at East Services, uh, Junction 14 on the M56, is one where you come off the motorway, whichever way you're heading, east or west, and you'll come off onto a roundabout. This roundabout goes over the motorway, and you will then travel from that into the services. It's only 100 yards off the motorway, but the, the important point is it is off the motorway, and that means there is now one services, not two and the services are accessible from either east or westbound. But, and this is a critical point, it's also available from the main road. So if you live in a nearby town or village, or live in Chester or Ellesmere Port, and you want to come here to stop at the services or charge your car, you can get to this one without having to go on the motorway at all. And what that does is it opens up this services to a much wider market. The Sandbach South services, for example, can only take people coming south on the M6, nobody else. This one can take people travelling east or west on the M56. They can take people from Chester, Ellesmere Port, uh, Runcorn, Widnes, uh, from a wide catchment area. And so this is becoming a hub rather than the motorway services. We will be launching a video shortly, which is going to look at the benefits and uh, the snags of uh, each of these. Which is best, which is worst, which is going to be most convenient. Uh, what's the future? So watch out for those videos. This is a lovely central location. And now with the grid serve installation being installed here, it's a good charging point. They have 12 350 kilowatt chargers. Brand new. All of them are single CCS2 adapters, so there's no power sharing here at all. These are all dedicated chargers. Two of the chargers do have dual plugs, one CCS2 and one CHAdeMO. However, these are not shared. There is only one bay, so you can pull in and either plug in a CCS2 or plug in a CHAdeMO. You can't run both of them. So in terms of power, this is a very good location because there's no power sharing. So those of you with the more powerful cars, like in this case, the uh, Porsche Taycan, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and 6 and the Kia, 
um, EV6 and 5. Uh, these, you'll be getting a huge, huge charging session. <laughs>